What are feed rules and how can you use them in Google Merchant Center for your e-com store? I'm gonna show you right now in this video. Let's go. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Hey guys, okay, so now we're in the, the Google Merchant Center dashboard and to get to feed rules, we go to products on the left, feeds, then here you should see your product feed or whatever product feed you want to add the rules to. This one's a Google Sheets one. I'm going to click into this. It's then going to show you more info about the feed. It's going to show you um, any problems with the feed. Um, that's all fine. There are some problems there, but we're going to go into feed rules over here. And this is the section where we adjust our feed rules. So here Google has given us some example rules that you can set up. I actually think these are really good. Um, and something to note before you actually set up your rules is it's important to have a goal in mind. So using feed rules, it's fantastic because it can save you a lot of time. You can automate a lot of things, but it also allows you to add automatic rules to your feed without needing to, to pay for extra enterprise software. Like we use Data Feed Watch for a lot of our feeds. It allows us to do the exact same thing, add all these automated rules um, for, for uh, all our stores and for the feed and the products in those stores, but you can also do it here in Merchant Center. It's, it's entirely possible. So what you can do here, for example, is maybe your feed from Shopify um, has the product titles, but you want to add the brand in and the brand is going to really help because people are likely going to be searching for that brand or your brand and you want to add that to the title, uh, whatever type of products you're selling. So for example, here you know, it says set my feed, it'll have the title plus a space plus the brand name. The brand name comes from, that's actually in the feed, but it's not part of the title. It's its own variable, its own attribute in the feed. You can add stuff like get age group out and, and uh, attribute that to the age group um, attribute in, in the in Merchant Center. Um, you can also pull stuff like strings like red, blue, black, colors, any text, and then put that into the color attribute of the feed, which is really, really handy, um, which is really, really cool. You do a bunch of other stuff here too as well. Um, but we're just gonna go through a basic setup of just um, adding your branding to your title. Um, and like I said before, make sure you know what goal you're doing here. So why, what are you going to actually edit? What are you manipulating in your feed? Um, and that's what Feed Rules is all about really. Making it really easy so that when you get new products onto your feed, it automatic, automatically edits the attributes and manipulates it into what's actually better off for Google Shopping. So let's create our first rule here. So you're gonna play, press plus and it's gonna have process attributes. So these are the ones that have come in already and so you can reprocess a certain attribute. So for example, if we wanna change the title, we scroll down to title here and this means that we're gonna be editing the title. So here is the conditions. So this is basically when does this rule get triggered? And it's basically like if then, if this and this or if this or this. So for example, let's go in and let's say, okay, if brand contains O2. So if brand contains O2, boom, it adds that in. Then it'll do whatever we put down here. You can put an and statement. So if brand contains O2 and let's say availability equals in stock. Then that means that only if it's in stock and it's that brand, well, you can, are you gonna edit it? So if you can see what I'm doing here, you can really change based on different rules and different um, situations, what, how you're gonna change things. So, so maybe you only wanna change add, uh, change, add the brand to the title for certain brands, for certain products. And so you can basically use this to, to go, okay, well, you can even go to ID and then make sure you get the right product ID in there. Um, and even, you know, look at what are all the product IDs that you want to manipulate what do they all have in common? Maybe they, they have a certain SKU number or maybe something, some sort of prefix or something like that. You can put that in. You can also make this apply to multiple different rules. So put or, and so if a brand contains O2 and ID contains say XI, um, or brand contains O2 um, and contains this, then you can make it so it, it's gonna be in either of those, it's gonna happen. So you can see that this can get pretty complicated, um, but it allows a lot of freedom to really uh, manipulate the data in the feed. Um, so let's just say a brand contains O2. And let's go, let's set title. So we're setting the title, set to, we can pull out the title, put a space bar. This is what I'm doing here. So it's gonna say, set it to the title, because we want title, plus brand. So it's gonna set the title to the brand plus, and then we can go back into process attributes and actually pull out that brand value here. 
and make it so that's going to add to the end of the, the title there. That's really, really simple. And you can even do stuff here like make it so it's going to have one of those little bar things there. Press enter. So it's going to have the title plus a bar plus brand. And the cool thing, you could just type in the brand here yourself, but the advantage here is that it means that if the brand might be O2 screens, O2 stands, maybe they're two different brands, but they have very similar O2 in them. It's going to then have, for the ones that have O2 screens, it's going to have O2 screens here. For the ones that have O2 brands, it's going to have O2 brands here. So it's going to adjust on each product depending on what the, the actual brand is, because here it's pulling um, pulling the actual brand of that, of that, um, that product line. So let's just go okay. So boom, so that's added it here um, and that's all cool. So um, what we're gonna do now is, is save as draft. And this is gonna then save it. And so it doesn't actually publish it right away. It allows you to see what the feed will look like with those changes. So here we can actually click test changes. And this does take a little bit. Okay, so it creates a report. Um, and you might have to wait five, 10 minutes, depending on, on, on what, how big the feed is and that sort of thing. Okay guys, so now that the test has been run, the report's run, uh, we can actually see show test. It's gonna tell us uh, what actually was changed. And this is a way that you can actually see um, how things have, have changed. So it's saying, okay, the title has been changed. Um, so it has added O2 screens at the very end. Um, so that's really cool. Here it's actually added in, um, it's added in there, those marks there. So we, we would go back and I'd be like, okay, well, we made a mistake there in those rules. So we'd remove those quotation marks because we don't actually need those at all in the rule. We, we can just have the, the bar there by itself and uh, Google should pick that up. So here I'd already put O2 screens in the actual uh, product title in the feed because we'd use um, a Google Sheets to set that up. But what you could do is, you know, that, that can get added in automatically at the end. Um, so yeah, so that's pretty much it. That shows you how to uh, add in the, uh, the, 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 the rules. When you go back to the feeds here, the feed rules, that's now going to be there once it loads up. Um, and so that's just still hasn't been applied yet. Once you click apply, boom, that's then going to apply those rules. They're gonna be live and that's gonna change um, your feed uh, with those rules. I hope that helped you set up feed rules in Merchant Center for your e-com store. If this video was helpful, please give it a like. And as always, if you have any questions, please just leave them in the comments below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. If you want more videos about how to scale your e-commerce store remotely, please subscribe and you'll see more videos to come. Thanks for watching, bye for now.